بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك السلام عليكم everybody we are inshallah starting a new series of tafsir in this sessions which will start today and uh, it will last until December 22nd uh, every Tuesday at 1.30 Pacific time inshallah till 2.15 we're going to have a tafsir session where we'll be covering Surah Yaseen, Surah Al-Rahman, Surah Al-Waqa'a and Surah Al-Mulk inshallah. So Bismillah Rahman Rahim, let's start inshallah. We always start reciting Quran by A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So we start by I seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the outcast, from the cursed devil. So the devil uh, is prevented by this statement, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. The devil is prevented from affecting our religious affairs or from hindering us from adhering to what we were commanded or even luring us into what we were prohibited from. So we want to, to be safe. We want to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will guide us, who will guard us against shaitan. And then we start with Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. And the reason we start uh, uh, with the basmala, we say Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said, كل عمل لا يبدأ بسم الله فهو أبتر. So every action that does not start with the, same, with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, then it is missing some reward. So say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim so that the action that you are going to do, to, you are about to do, would get easier for you. Because you are not going to do the action with your strength, but with the strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim so you can get the help and the strength from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what's the difference between the two words, ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim? Both words are derived from ar-Rahman, from mercy. And both words show mercy. But Ar-Rahman shows mercy to the Muslim and to the non-Muslim. And that will be in both the dunya and the akhirah. This is the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by nature. A mom would uh, care about her child. This is Rahmah. We would care about each other, so this is Rahmah. So people, whether they are good or bad, they have Rahmah inside them. But Ar-Rahim shows extra mercy to those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا And he didn't say, وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحْمًا No, وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا so that's why we start with A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Now, before going into Surah Yaseen, we will start with a few words about Surah Yaseen. The uh, Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, believed that Surah Yaseen saves from evil. Surah Yaseen envelops us in Allah's blessings. It also gives or grants us what we need when we read it for that intention. And uh, some of the uh, friends of Allah, some of Ahlullah, they, they read for 41 times of Surah Yaseen 
for anything that they believe they need help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether to get benefit or to abstain from any harm that might happen. And if we, um, if we look at Imam, uh, Musnad Imam Ahmad, it was reported that the companion, Ghudayf ibn al-Harith, was on his deathbed. And he asked the people who were around him, is there someone who memorized Surah Yaseen? And a tabi'i with the name Saleh said, yes, I do. So Ghudayf said, recite it. And uh, uh, Saleh عنه, recited it, started to read it. And when he reached Ayah 40, Ghudayf passed away. Saleh commented at that time. He said, our elders used to say, if Surah Yaseen is recited over a person who, who, um, who is on his deathbed, then it makes the death easy for him. And actually, um, this, subhanAllah, uh, explains the saying, اقرأوا ياسين على موتاكم. It's not after they die, but it's be while they are dying. If you know that a person is dying, read Surah Yaseen, and it will make his passing go smoother. And there are so many hadith on the uh, narrations, so many sayings on how uh, Surah Yaseen is uh, so special. Uh, some of these narrations are uh, uh, not so authentic, so we are not going to go in that direction. But these are the most important things I wanted to start with. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Surah Yaseen. Surah Yaseen is a surah of the Middle Meccan surahs, the Middle Meccan age. So what does this mean? We know that when we say surah is Makki surah, or uh, it means that this surah was revealed before the migration of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Mecca to Medina. So it was revealed before the Hijrah. And normally the Meccan surahs have some uh, common char characteristics so they have short verses and they, ha they are rhyming in eloquence and uh, they, they focus and they concentrate on the aqeedah, building the strong aqeedah of the Muslim. Because we know Mecca surahs uh, were revealed for, uh, at the beginning when uh, when Islam was first uh, spread, so this was the a the period that uh, uh, the Muslims are new to this religion. So it builds these surahs build the strong, the sound, the perfect aqidah creed, and it emphasizes on faith, faith with uh, the wahi faith with revelation, with the, uh, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, faith with um, uh, death, resurrection, uh, reckoning. Uh, it tells the stories of the previous uh, uh, messages. So sometimes we uh, read uh, 30, the, the 30th juz, if you read it, it's almost all full of Mecca surahs. And you see how the uh, surahs are, have short verses, short verses. And if we look at Surah Yaseen, it has um, fairly short verses and it rhymes. 
if you look at the whole surah, it the whole each and every ayah end either with the letter mim or with the letter noon. So this is of the miraculous nature of Surah Yasin. Now, if we start with the first ayah, Yasin. Yasin is considered one of the forms of Al-Huruf Al-Muqatta'a. And Al-Huruf Al-Muqatta'a are the letters that were, uh, that would start a surah, but these letters might not have a meaning. For example, Alif Lam Mim. There has been several interpretations, what does Alif Lam Mim mean? But there is only Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, the all-knowing knows what it means. Some people would say, okay, these are just used for uh, uh, as short forms of the names of Allah. The, some people say these uh, letters don't have meanings. Some people say, uh, uh, say that these letters together would mean something. So Yasin, let's look at this, uh, these two letters, Yasin. So we have the two letters ya seen as if you are calling ya seen so as if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and talking to him because in one of the uh, one of the uh, tribes this word ya seen means ya insan o man and this is all the best of creations, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And some people say it's uh, an oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, brought these ahruf uh, muqatta'a uh, and if we calculate all of them, Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim Sad, Alif Lam Ra, Noon, Qaf, uh, Yasin, Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ayn, Sad. So these are the beginnings of some surahs. So if we, look, if we take uh, the letters of uh, these letters and we count them, we find that they are 14 letters. And the Arabic language, the alphabet, has 28 letters. So this is half of the alphabets. And this has um, some miracle in it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging every person to get something that's similar to the Quran. Okay, these are the letters that it's your language, I did, it's not an invention of a new language, it's the language of the Arabs, and the Arabs were very eloquent. So many poets, so many uh, narrator, narrators, it was the more, it's the most eloquent language. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging people to get a similar surah using the same letters. They couldn't challenge them, uh, them to get a similar few ayahs. They couldn't. One ayah, they couldn't. So this is these ahruf muqatta'a. These are the indication of the miraculous nature of the Quran. And no one yani, can know the exact meaning of these letters, combined letters with no meanings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-knowing only knows what's the real meaning of these letters together, put together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, is talking, let's say, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is swearing. He is swearing by what? Wal-Qur'ani al-Hakim. When we have a wow at the beginning of the ayah, this wow is called wow al-qasam. 
the vow of oath. So it's used to attract our attention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to swear. So he is going to swear by something that's great about something that is great. So he's attracting our attention. So what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swearing by? Allah is swearing, and this is an oath by the Holy Quran. Wal Quran al Hakim. So he's swearing by the Quran. And Al Hakim means full of wisdom. It, the Quran is full of wisdom, it's full of final judgment, it's full of laws that cover everything. Quran is the source of life. It governs everything justly. This is the, the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by something great about something also great. So what is he swearing about? He is telling Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Indeed, you Muhammad are from among the messengers. Because we all know that when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, asked to call for uh, Islam in public, People denied him, people belied him, and they, some of them said, you are not a, a messenger, some said you are a, a, a magician, some said you are liars, some said, but Allah is swearing here. No, you are, you are from among the messengers. Ala siratim mustaqim. You are on the straight path. So you are a messenger, and you are on the straight path. So the one who follow you will also be following the straight path. This straight path, the end of this straight path is the heavens. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, uh, a shaitan promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was outcasted out of Jannah that he will, he will surely try to do his best to get people go astray from the sirat al mustaqim and if you if you look where does shaitan come where does he whisper he doesn't whisper for those who go to the bars and for those who gamble they are already on uh, going astray but they but he whispers to the people to the people who are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we say, Ya Allah, nas'aluka sabra ala ta'a. Ya Allah, we ask you to help us to, to be steadfast while worshiping you. Because shaitan will never, will never accept to leave people unless he, un, uh, until he deviate them. That's his promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why when every now and then we should say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Whenever we want to say, whenever we want to do anything, our intention should be directly and, and clearly, purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for our nafs, not for our dunya, not for our uh, in, uh, um, uh, uh, anything that we would love, no. It's for the sake, pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem and start your action with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So Allah is saying, إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ If you go back to Surah Al-Fatiha, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all read Surah Al-Fatiha every day uh, in our prayers and we say, Ya Allah, we ask you to guide us to the right path. Some interpre interpretations say that al mustaqim when we ask Allah, al mustaqim we ask him to guide us to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because one of the names of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is al mustaqim so we want to follow Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tanzeel al-Aziz al-Rahim. 
So this Quran was revealed by the exalted in might, the merciful. And we know that Quran is the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever holds it tight will be guided. It's our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we get connected to the Quran, the more our, our heart will be filled with the light of Quran and the closer we will be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all know that all the previous uh, uh, revelations were given just in one, once to the prophets. The Torah was given to Sayyidina Musa just once. Uh, uh, the Injil was given to Sayyidina Isa in just once, except for the Quran. The Quran was revealed from the, uh, uh, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, munajjaman. Munajjaman, which means that it was descended few ayahs by few ayahs by few ayahs and it lasted 23 years until it was complete from the word Iqra till the last, uh, the last ayah. And when the last ayah was revealed, then the Sayyidina Abu Bakr cried because he knew that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is about to die. The mission is complete. The mission is complete. And when Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was, was given the choice to, to live forever or to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Ar -rafiq al -a'la. So we, we want to get connected to Allah through the book that he revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to strengthen our relationship with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by reading about him, by reading about his seerah, by reading about, his, about the Sahaba. And we, by sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do it as a word every day, 100 salawat, Every day, 100 salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Get connected. So what we are doing now is we are trying to understand the Quran, but we also want to be connected to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لِتُنذِرَ قَوْمًا مَا أُنذِرَ آبَاؤُهُمْ فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ So to warn a nation of people, whose forefathers were not worn, so they were heedless. What does this mean? From, and, and we are talking here about the people of Mecca. The people of Mecca did not receive any message. So from Ismail alayhi salam, until Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, there was no messenger sent to the people of Mecca. And that's why their forefathers were not warned. But we know that some of them were good-hearted that they would not accept to worship idols. For example, وَرَقَ بِالنَّوْفَلْ the uncle of Khadija radiallahu anha. He was of the Muwahideen. He was on the Deen al Hanif. Certainly, the word has, pro has proved true against most of them. Most of them. So they will not believe. So what happened, as I just mentioned, some of them would not accept to worship any idols, but most of them did not believe. They, they worshipped idols. So those, so, so those people uh, took another god. 
And those are the people, those people, most of them would not accept to leave the God who they are uh, uh, making in their hands. For example, they would make a, a, a God of dates in the morning and during the day, if they got hungry, they will eat that, that God. And again, they will make another God and they will worship that God. Or they, they will. So those people, most of them did not want to leave their gods, did not want to abandon the gods that their fathers, forefathers used to worship. So they belied Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu when he was revealed to, when he was sent to them. So those are the people who were stubborn and they were against the message of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they deserve, and, and, and for this, they, those people deserved torment because they denied, they did not believe, they did not, they did not want to listen. They persisted in their denial and hostile attitude to the truth, even after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to warn them. So what happened? Why? What, what's the problem with them? إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ أَغْلَالًا فَهِيَ إِلَى الْأَذْقَانِ فَهُمْ مُقْمَحُونَ So we have put iron colors around their necks. We've put shackles around their necks. Necks. So it's their necks are going up to their chins. So their heads are raised up. Those people who rejected Islam are unable to look at the truth out of their arrogance. So their, their necks made, um, so they are made stiff necky. Neck. So their, their necks cannot move in the right direction. So their eyes cannot go to the right direction. They cannot see. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ We put barriers before them and barriers behind them. So the Sirat is in front of them, but they are not looking at it. They're not following it. So their eyes are covered up. They cannot see. وَسَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ It doesn't matter. It's the same whether you, are, you, whether you warn them or you don't warn them. Most of them will not believe. There is a barrier. There is a, a veil on their eyes. A veil on their heart. It's always said that there is a, a, a nice example about the veil that if you have a white paper and someone uh, made a mistake and you put a dot on that white paper. If that person did not do istighfar, did not repent and made other other uh, mistakes so this this dot this black dot will not be erased but more dots will be next to each other until the whole page is covered with black dots and you will not see the clear white page so the heart has a veil they cannot see and whether you warn them or not they are not going to believe but the only people you can truly warn are those who follow the Quran 
a dhikr is one of the names of the Quran. Because it reminds you when you are heedless. So you call these people, you warn these people who follow the Quran, whose heart is pure to accept. So you, follow, you, you warn those people who follow the Quran and those people uh, are reminded by the Quran. So when they are heedless, when they read the Quran, they go back. And this is one of the amazing, amazing miracles of the Quran. If you feel you are stressed out, just take your Quran and read, read a page, two pages, three pages, read the jizr. And you feel that as if the, the mountain is, is not there anymore on your shoulders. You feel relieved. So, what happens in the matunduru man ittaba'a dhikra wa khashiya ar-rahman bil ghayb? You also warn those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private. It's not only we abstain from doing something bad because people are around us. No. The courage is to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do and to abstain from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to abstain from when we are alone. And we always have to remember what At-Tusturi radiallahu anhu said, Allahu ma'i, Allahu nadiri, Allahu hadiri, Allahu shahidi. Allah is with me. He's watching over me. And sometimes people would say, oh, okay, this is a small sin. It's, it's, it won't matter. I will do istighfar. It's not the, how big or small the sin is. But look at who did you disobey? You disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private. So those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who, have, uh, who follow the Quran, those are the people who will have the glad tidings the noble rewards who will have general generous rewards so what are these rewards what are these rewards uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith qudusi a'dadtu li'ibadi as-salihina ma la 'aynun ra'at wa la udhunun sami'at wa la khatar 'ala qalbi bashar i have prepared for my righteous slaves that which no eye has seen no ear has heard and has never crossed the mind of any human being. And the best of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best of the rewards is the gaze into the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we, we want to be of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so these are the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with on the day after. So, إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is talking about those uh, Allah is saying we shall surely resurrect the dead. We shall surely resurrect them. And we will write down all they sent ahead and their traces. What does this mean? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have the angels to write all the good deeds that they sent ahead. And that what, whatever good deeds they did, and they, uh, they were forgotten. Nobody, no people would think about them. Or, but also their traces. What is the وَأَثَارَهُمْ وَأَثَارَهُمْ means what they leave behind them after they die. So Allah is re recording everything. So what does someone leave behind after they die? They leave either good or bad. An example of leaving something good, if someone built a, a mosque, he will be rewarded as many, uh, uh, the same way as if he was praying in that mosque, the same way that people are praying in this building. And if someone also well, did a bad thing, for example, he owned a bar, then he would get the sins of all the people who go there also. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ There is a record. The record has everything registered in it. So now we move to the story of Ashab al-Qariya. Who are those people? وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابَ الْقَرْيَةِ إِذْ جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, telling Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell them the story of the people of the village. These, there was a village and uh, two uh, messengers were sent to this village. إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهُمُ اثْنَيْنِ فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا when we sent to them, to this village, to the people of this village, we sent two messengers. But what they ha what what did the people do? They denied them. They belied them. So we reinforced, and we sent a third one. We so the messengers now are three. And they said to the people, we are messengers to you. The people looked at them and they said, They said, you are not, but a human like us. And the most merciful has not revealed anything. They know that Allah is merciful. So they said, he hasn't revealed anything. In antum illa takribun. So you are but liars telling lies and uh, saying things that are not true. So being honest and telling lies were characteristics and they were known from early ages and that's why when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu uh, uh, was uh, uh, the one who you know, we know the story of the stone uh, Al-Hajar Aswad the black stone that when they b rebuilt the Kaaba they uh, took the stone and when the Kaaba was rebuilt, they wanted to put the stone back. The tribes wanted to have that honor, so each claimed that they have to do it. And there was a big uh, uh, issue about it. So they, one, of the, one of the wisest people there suggested that, okay, let's, let's have the ruling of the first person who is coming coming to uh, to this majlis. So the first one was Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they all accepted saying, Ja'a, Ja'a al-Sadiq al-Ameen. This person who came here is the honest, trusty, the 
the one who always says the truth. So these are uh, these two characteristics are very important. So so the, the messengers told them, our Lord knows that we are messengers to you. And we are not responsible of anything except for proclaiming the clear message. We just have to give you the message. You are free to accept or not. We have to give the message to you. We are messengers from God and we have to, to give you what we, what we were ordered to. What was the answer? The people of the village said, So, they said, we considered you, we considered you bad omen. If you don't stop, if you don't desist, we will surely stone you and you will be punished severely. So they now, the first step, they belied them. The second step, they now, they, uh, they are threatening them. So the messenger said, your omen is with, you, with yourselves. If you had bad omen, then it's you. You had this, you are saying this because we are reminding you. We are reminding you with Allah. We are reminding you with the day after. We are reminding you with Resurrection, we are reminding you with reckoning. Is that why you have the bad omen? Rather, you are people who transgressed all bounds. So what happened? This Rajul, and there came from the farthest end of the city a man. He was running. He was in. He was. He was coming very fast. Why? Because there was the the news were spread that there are uh, messengers and that uh, uh, those messengers had something uh, miraculous, but even though the people would not believe them. One of the, one of the things that they did, they healed so many people. And this was one of the miracles that came with them, that they could do. So this person, Habib al-Najjar, came when he heard that those people can do can uh, uh, cure people he came from the very far end of the city and he had leprosy he was sick and he used to worship the idols for 70 years just hoping that they can cure him so he met the messengers and they asked him to to believe in allah and he said, I want, I want uh, a sign that you are truthful. And they said, we, we can uh, cure, cure the sick people. So he said, okay, here I am. I'm sick, cure me. So with the uh, permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, they cured him and he believed. So when he knew, when he later knew that the uh, the people want to kill the messengers. He came. He came to the people. And he said, Oh people, just follow these messengers. Because he knew that they were 
honest, that they were truthful. So the only thing they are asking you to, to do is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, to take him as the one God, and not to worship any, any, anything with him, not to associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm warning you, you want to kill these messengers? Oh, people, just wake up. You cannot kill them. They are truthful. So obey, obey those who ask no wages for you, of you and those who are rightly guided. So if uh, they, they would, they are doing you a favor, a favor that you cannot re reimburse them for. They are saving your akhirah. So, what happened? اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرهم وهم محتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون And they asked him Are you? The people asked him Are you on their religion? And he said yes, I follow them And why should I not worship worship, worship Allah subhanahu wa Allah, why, why, who has created me? What's there to stop me from sincerely worshipping the one who has created me? And worshipping him alone, with no partner, no associator. وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And to whom you shall be returned, when your deeds will be scaled for you. Everyone is going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone is going back. If your deeds are good, then you will be rewarded. This is what he is telling them. And this is what he learned from the messengers. If your deeds are evil, then you will be punished. Should I take other gods than him? If the most merciful intends for me any harm, their intercession will be of no use to me whatsoever. Nothing will help me. You people will not, will not save me. No one can save me. Of course I believed in Allah. Then indeed, I will be a loser if I don't follow him. He's talking to the people. He's talking to the people. And it might be understood that he is talking to the Rasul also, to the messengers. Oh, listen to me. Verily, I believed in your Lord. Bear witness to that. Bear witness to that, that he, he, he believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he said so, his people, the people of the village, started to stone him. And he died. It said, enter paradise. For whoever is a murderer, there they will be in Jannah. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ Don't think that those people who die for the sake of Allah are dead. No. They are highly rewarded with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قِيلَ دْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ So, Jannah is a place for you. With all its bounties, with all its provision. قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ he said, I wish my people could know. I wish my people would know how my Lord has forgiven me. Because I, I said the truth, because I believed, because I, I stood fast. And placed me among the, the others. My Lord has forgiven me and made me of the honored ones because of my faith in him, because of my strong belief in the messengers, 
they are truthful. He wanted people to know about his rank so they would believe and obey. He said, Ya alamu. I wish my people knew where am I now. I think we will stop here, inshallah. And uh, we will continue next time, inshallah. So may Allah connect us with the Quran. May Allah give us comprehensive understanding of the Quran. May Allah guide us with the Quran. May Allah enlighten our path with the Quran. May Allah connect us with his beloved messenger who received the revelation of the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We'll see you next week, inshallah.